Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play The Messenger. In the last part, we continued through the Picnic Panic DLC, reaching Fire Mountain after finishing off Voodkin Shores. And now we're gonna go through this place. If I were to compare this to anything, it's an odd combination of Searing Crags and the Underworld. Because we're going through a lot of vertical rooms with a lot of, obviously, instant death spikes. Well, not, no, no, not instant death. This isn't Mega Man. A lot of spikes all over the place. Actually, if I ever refer to them as instant death spikes, sex and only just because I'm used to that, I may very well have. Uh, but there is lava, and by that I mean bottomless pits that are implied to lead to lava. So don't fall down, that's just gonna cause death, and let's be real, that's no good. I've said that's no good a lot over this project. Either uh, way. Uh, the main mechanic of this place that's unique is that there are technically two maps to this place. Uh, an outside map and an inside map, and you alternate between them when going through doors. The main puzzle is figuring out how to get the, uh, the mask pieces due to this, as some are in the background area, some are in the outside area. Thankfully, if you have all the abilities I have, and they're marked on the map like they are for me, you can get a good idea of which side they're on just based off the map as the things that are on the inside or I guess the opposite side of the map from where you are rather are semi-transparent on the map for instance the mask pieces are semi-transparent I think they technically just cut out like every other pixel to make it like that also I was wrong this mechanic shows up here as well now this if I recall is the last time they used this The mask pieces of Fire Mountain, I think, are easier to find than the ones in Boodkin Shore, but I think they're also a little bit harder to nab at the same time. With that said, again, still easier than the main game in that regard. Though, I will admit, I still had to do the same thing I did in Boodkin Shores here. I accidentally skipped one of the mask pieces when going through it, and since I wanted to make this as linear a journey as possible, as little backtracking as possible for the DLC, I needed to come back to the beginning of the stage again. So if you see my time shards fluctuate a bit throughout the part, it's due to that and the fact I'm still buying figures at the Craftsman's Corner. The only reason I'm not showing that is it does nothing. Like, it's just there for a, a money sink. There's some fun dialogue enough there, and you get some backstory, like, like uh, the, the Quill Shrooms in Quill Shroom Marsh are converted adventurers uh, cursed by the Queen of Quills, which is a little morbid. Also a bit Mario RPG-like now that I think about it due to the shroom status. Huh. I think potentially the most interesting flavor text there, though, probably belongs to the bosses. From my memory, at least. I actually don't remember any of it off the top of my head, but yeah. Also, I love the way the sun looks here in the background. I haven't really talked too much about the background stuff of the entire game, barring maybe the occasional off-mention. But there might be the most striking part of the game, because they contrast well with the level design without being distracting. It's incredible. I love this pink sky. I've always loved sunrise, sunset aesthetics, and I still think to this day one of the games that did it best is Donkey Kong Country Returns. I love the way they did that. I'm throwing around in my head if this is the most annoying out of the mask pieces here to get in Fire Mountain. Less so for this half of it, but for the second half. Because in the second half, you need to ask, act fast and rope dart onto these birds in sequence without falling down. Otherwise, you need to redo the first half again. That is surprisingly precise. Unless you know it's there to begin with. And even then, it's still a little precise. You may have noticed, though, each of the mask pieces looks a little bit different. That's because they are proper pieces of the final mask they're going to create. And I like that attention to detail, because they could have very well just done the thing and make them all look the same and, like, view f viewed from the back so they're all the same color palette. No, they actually made the detail, making them combine into the final face, and I I'm fond of the fact they did that. That's nice. Not a fan of that face on that spike ball, though. Yikes, that is creepy. This is the stage where the Voodkins actually try to hurt you, and thus you can attack them no problem. They still don't drop anything, but you at least have a reason to attack them. There's some that have weird little spike... rakes, I guess? And there's those that are breathe fire, but at the same time, like, you can ignore them. You don't have to, but you can. 
I will say I'm glad they at least had the forethought to include a stage select for the DLC. As if I had to replay the entire DLC because I missed one mask piece, that could be really annoying. But since they placed actual checkpoints throughout that sort of act as stage selects, there's at least that little quality of life playtesting test thing there. Also, I am doing this the completely wrong way with the Windmill Shuriken. If you have the Windmill Shuriken, you can just get on top of this initial platform and throw one of your Windmill Shurikens at it. No need to go through that all that effort I just went through there. In fact, when I had to replay the level to get the mask piece I missed, ah, uh, that's what I did. If there's anything I really like about late game and the DLC, though, it's that they get really kinetic with their platforming. Because while the main game had some kinetic platforming, they didn't get this, like, into, like, this type of platforming until usually the end game. As the linear stages were still doing a slow, steady curve of introducing you new mechanics and how to jump around them, how to cloud step off them, so on and so forth. Since at this point you need to have beaten the game to see this, they went all out with it. Oh, also, I should mention, I, I talked about New Game Plus last part, of course. But something I forgot to mention is that you actually can't play this DLC in New Game Plus until you've gotten the map, so after you've done the linear section of the game. So you still have to wait a little bit for that, but at least you can, you know, do it. And I'm thinking the main reason that is, is because of Barmothazel's presence, because, you know, he, last time we saw him, he kind of blew up. And hey, there's the Crystal Pumpkin from the story we heard last part. Similarly to the uh, the main game, most of the shopkeeper stories have Easter eggs littered throughout the area. The one for the Infinity story we heard in Voodkin Shores is really hard to find, though, in that you need to wait in a certain area for like 30 seconds and a secret door opens that I didn't know about until I was preparing for this very LP. The only reason I didn't show it off is because I had to wait around for 30 seconds, and let's be real, since there's no achievement tied to them, there's no real point to it. And that's the next Max. Max? Max. You know, the, 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 the little brother from Wizards of Waverly Place and the son from... I think that was the name of the son in uh, George Lopez, wasn't it? I actually can't recall. It's been some time since I watched George Lopez. I remember loving the show as a kid. And I am one of those people that has memories of waking up at like 11 p.m. to 1 in the morning to Lowrider blowing my ears out despite being very quiet on the TV. I also have distinct memories of when I was on vacation with my family in small hotel rooms. That was like the, the, the ones that are like two beds in a single room. Just having like Disney Channel on at like one in the morning and my mom would wake up and go, Kyle, go to bed! To which I would do quickly because, uh, you know, if your mother is the nicest person in the world, there's that little part of you that fears the ever-living hell out of them. To quote something my nana, which is my dad's mother, used to say to him when he was little. I brought you into this world, I can take you out of it. Alright, here's where I missed the last mask piece that I needed to grab. And it's one of my favorite ones to get to, because you need to do a really cool platform sequence around the birds. The, the green birds are interesting though, in that there's two ways you can use them. You can either use them just as cloud step platforms like you have to for this one. Or you can do what we did in the previous mask piece, or was it the one before that? No, it was the one before that. It actually stands on them like the platforms, like, uh, what was the name of the bird from Super Mario Bros. 2 USA? The, oh, I can't remember it. But the, the red bird that you need to use as a platform in some stages. I will say, though, as well, compared to Voodkin Shores, Fire Mountain feels a lot shorter. I can't tell if it's because the platforming is generally faster, or if it is actually shorter, though. I think it's the latter, because unless there's grappling uh, uh, rope dart hooks for you to use, you can get a lot more speed vertically in this game than you can horizontally, thanks to how much you can chain cloud steps and jump attacks, so on and so forth. It's a lot easier to traverse vertically in a fast setting. Also, not the biggest fan of the Fire Mountain song. It's good, but leans more towards the atmospheric for my tastes, I suppose. At least for a game like this. It's better than 8-bit, I'll give it that. I don't know why 8-bit music just has that 
energy that fits fast-paced platformers more than 16-bit does. Like, I try to think of 16-bit platformer music on, like, the Super Nintendo... Uh, more so the Super Nintendo than the Genesis, admittedly, because, like, Sonic nailed it. But uh, when it comes to songs I think of that fit that energy correctly, there's... Mega Man X 1 through 3, even though I don't like X3 soundtrack. Uh... I guess Mario Worlds. And that's about it, really, out of, like, the big things. Like, Super Metroid's very down-to-earth and atmospheric. The only song I can ever remember out of that game out of the top of my head, that's not Samus's theme, and Ridley's theme is... Uh... Lower Brinstar? Hmm. Yeah, that's actually about all I can recall. Thankfully, we're about at the top of the mountain. I believe we're coming up on the final boss of this area. Oh, hey, look, one more room where it was in, so I could be wrong even more. Look, I just don't recall them using that mechanic that much, okay? I'm an idiot sometimes. It happens. Ooh, that's a gorgeous background. How punctual of you, messenger. So it really is you. I thought you died during the explosion in the underworld. <laughs> you think that would all it would take to get rid of me? I told you once, you son of a scribe. I'm the fastest there's ever been. Release the Phobikins now and be gone, demon, or I'll defeat you again. Oh, I wouldn't drag you all the way out here just to lose another duel. See this magic seed? It's almost an absorbing voodoo energy, and when it's ready, you'll see who has the last laugh. Voodoo energy? In this land, fear can be... converted. And when it comes to fear, these little guys are an endless supply. In order to fully charge the magic seed, I needed to scare them good. To that effect, I should thank you for stepping right into my trap. And by trap, I mean Voodoo Altar! Now don't move, messenger. It's not like you could anyway. <laughs> At last, the Dark Messenger is born. The Heart of Fire Mountain awaits you two, where I placed voodoo idols with the perfect enchantment to damage greed demons. Get enough idols first, and Dark Quarble will be defeated. Fail, and you will lose your own protector, leaving you completely exposed to the Dark Messenger to take your life. So let us see how you fare in a race against yourself, ninja. You won't get away with this. Look on the bright side. You won't have to see what happens to the Phobokins next. Oh, I don't like this at all. Please save us. Enough of your complaining. Now, how does the saying go? Oh, yes. Godspeed, messenger. <laughs> okay, not cool. Hey, why did you show up earlier? I'm not talking to Pirate Face ever again. Huh? Look, can we just prevent this? I'd rather not die. Quick, let's go. That outfit. He must be from the clan that taught me how to cloud step. This probably means... Quillable! Hey, monk. I think I found another clue related to the cultists. The primal fear can wait. I think we're at one of the branching points mentioned by the prophet. Oh, with that Quillable guy? Yes, it all makes sense now. Please look after them. Right away! And with that, we're entering the end game of Picnic Panic. With that, though, there is also going to be a checkpoint down here, which has our final stories from the shopkeeper during the non-end game. As well as the altar? Now, let's chat to you first. What about the current area? What am I supposed to do here? I'm not sure what's going on, but I strongly suggest you give your best shot at this race against your evil twin. Any stories to share? I do, but you should really get back to chasing the Dark Messenger. I'll tell you a good one after you save the day. Alright. What about this? Is that the altar I saw at the top of Fire Mountain? Why, yes it is! I thought it would be a cool addition to my shop. What happened to the caged monster thing? It was useless, so I got rid of it. For now, I'm just using the altar to store any voodoo feathers and mask pieces you find. It looks like you gathered all the voodoo feathers and mask pieces. Let's activate the altar and see what happens. Yeah. Smokin'! Great, I hate this thing already. 
You may be saying this now, and I bet the wonders of my comedy will grow on you in no time. Oh, yeah? Do, do you, you have an... I'm you sorry, go say... ahead. I meant to offer an example of how great I am at comedy. I'm listening. Okay. All right, I've got a good one. What is Ruxton's favorite fruit? The Spineapple. Get it? I get it, yes. And? And I wish I didn't activate the altar. Oh, I'll grow on you, you'll see. Hey, Welcome, so bench. Oh, Sorry, go, on, go ahead. ahead. No, please. No, you... I, I was, was just, just curious to... what... There's too many people in this shop. You were here first, messenger, so go ahead. I just want to understand what the deal is with this mask. The deal? What an ironic choice of words. I'm indeed here to offer you a deal available to New Game Plus adventurers exclusively. Do come see me if you're interested to learn about the deal. In the meantime, I'll be sharing the occasional joke for your entertainment. Oh, I just thought of another one. How do you call a Western hero that isn't in the same place where you are? The Western Darrow? Let's try it, but it's the Western Hero. No! Whatever, mine was better. I hate this thing already because it's me. But with that, I'm going to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 21, we're finishing off Picnic Panic. See you guys then.